Today I'm going to show you guys how to create this look using all Wet n Wild products. So let's get started. I actually don't have any Wet n Wild brow products so I had to do my brows off camera, but let's move on to priming the lids. In my opinion, Wet n Wild have probably one of the best eyeshadow primers from the drugstore. The only thing is, it's clear. But this is actually a good thing, because it means you can mix in your concealer to make sure it's going to work for your skin tone. Nothing worse than having a primer that's a little bit too light or a little bit too dark for you. And I'm also going to use this to etch out my brows a little bit more to add more definition. But the actual primer itself is amazing. It really holds on to the eyeshadow, really long lasting, and creates the perfect base. And if by magic, one of my eyes is already done. The eyeshadow palette that I'm using today is called Comfort Zone, and we're going to be using the bronze side. But you can swap this out and use the green side as well. We're going to start off with a short, dense pencil brush and the bronze tone. So this is the darkest tone from the palette, and we're going to apply it on the outer edge of the lid. And your lid is the area that people can't see when your eyes are open. So just look down in a mirror and stamp this on the outer half to outer third of the eye. Next, you're going to take a little bit more of that bronzy tone and mix it with the gold shade. And this will just ever so slightly lighten it up. And we're going to then apply this on the rest of the lid. No need to go back over the darker eyeshadow. We're just applying this on the inner corner, meeting up with the dark shade. So at this point, you have two eyeshadows on your lid and you need to blend them. Unfortunately, this palette doesn't have a matte eyeshadow and I don't like to use anything too shimmery in the crease. So we're going to use this blush on a blending brush and you're going to sweep this above the lid. So keep your eyes open, look straight on a mirror, and blend this over and back. And take your time with the blending process, it's actually the most important step. Taking a flat brush and the lightest shade from this palette, you're then going to apply this underneath the brow bone. And this should fade slightly into that blush tone. Now I'm going to be using a pigment. Now if you don't want to use a pigment, you can always use the other shade from the palette, but I love Wet n Wild pigments. And I'm just using this dry on the inner corner of the lid. If you're looking for some good loose pigments, definitely check out Wet n Wild. And then to finish, I'm going to apply a little bit of that lighter shade just on that inner corner. I did end up with quite a lot of fallout, so I'm going to take a little wipe and just wipe away the excess. On the waterline, I'm going to be using a bronzy gold tone instead of using a black. This is a great way to add that bronzy tone and bring out the colors on the lid. Then we're going to curl the eyelashes and apply some mascara. This is actually one of my favorite mascaras, not just from Wet n Wild, but just in general. I think this is my third tube I've gone through. I love the way that it catches and separates the lashes. It has a little ball at the top as well, so you can really pinpoint areas that you need to really catch. Unfortunately, my lashes aren't really up to scratch at the moment. And in real life, I would probably leave it like this, but on camera, I need some falsies. Moving now onto the face, I love that Wet n Wild have categorized their foundations from cool, warm, and neutral. It just makes things so much easier and it actually labels what it is on the actual bottle itself. My personal opinion is that most people need to go for either the neutral or the warm, unless you definitely know that you're cool. Once I applied that over my face and then used the Blank Canvas Cosmetics damp sponge and just blended that in. And I was really impressed with this foundation. I haven't used it very often, but I really like the way that it looked and it photographed really well too. To highlight underneath my eyes, I'm going to apply a lighter shade of concealer and also working this through the center of the face and onto the jawline. A little trick that I like to do is draw a line out from the edge of the lip, joining up with the jawline. And when you blend this in, it really brings out your cheekbones. It's just a great alternative to using bronzer because you still get that definition. Once I blended that out, I went in with the powder. I just realized it's upside down. And I believe each shade of foundation has a matching powder, which is really handy for everybody. I actually chose a lighter shade of powder though, to add a little bit more of a highlighted effect. Set in the areas that I have concealed. Now that we have done our highlighting, we can move on to highlighter. Highlighter basically is anything with a shimmer. This one in particular is beautiful because it has like a rose gold effect. So when the light is on it, it shows a beautiful glossy color. But when there's no light shining, it's actually more of like a pinky blush tone. So it's somewhere between a blush and a highlighter. And I love it. Unfortunately, you wouldn't use that kind of blushy tone on the rest of your face. For the rest of the face, I'm going to use a lighter shade of highlighter. 
for places like my nose and Cupid's bow. You wouldn't want to use that other highlighter here because it can kind of look a little bit splotchy, but when you're applying it on the cheeks, you can get away with it because it does look like blush. Now it's time for the lips. I was going to go for more of a plummy ready tone, but I actually went for more of a peach. But first of all, gotta line those lips. Unfortunately, I don't have a wet and wild pencil, so I just use one by Primark. And I always use one shade darker in my pencil compared to the lipstick. I was really impressed with these liquid lipsticks. They went on so smoothly, really long lasting, didn't seem to dry out my lips either. The only thing is they were a little bit sheer and you can still see that little bruise that's on my lip. So I went over and applied a little extra to get that opaque finish. And then there you go. That is the finished look. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you recreate it, I would love to see it. So you can tag me in it. It's at Sinead Katie or hashtag the makeup chair. And I'll see you guys in the next one. If you want to learn how to clean your beauty blenders, check out the videos on the screen now.